That's what it looks like inside. That's our controller. Usually they have six cells inside. And uh, they're two in parallel. And then they're serial with one, two, three to give us our voltage. So usually now we can just rip them out. Usually they glued down. That's one. So now you can see how that they're wired in series. I'll just cut the signal voltage. Like that. So two parallel and then positive to negative, negative to positive, negative to positive, and then negative to the thing. That's one. Open up the second one. Now, usually they're uh, they're a lot more difficult to open than this. You end up breaking them. So there we go again. Six. So again, we're just gonna. Get them out of there. Okay. I'm going to use this really sticky tape. I can see it. To stick them to the bottom. So again, cut all these extra wires. And there it is again. Positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, into our, I believe this is called a BMS, battery monitoring system. Usually the reason you can't just replace the batteries inside the, the actual battery pack and get it to work again is because once the BMS reads a voltage too low, it will not, uh, even if you put new cells in, it won't work. Kind of shit, but. Anyway, so once you have them out, now we're going to look for the good ones. You can see though in the pod over there, I did a, uh, we believe, three other batteries. And um, I'll show you what I found. So now we have this pairs. Just be very, very careful because uh, these metal tabs, once they're cut like this, they're razor sharp. I can I already cut myself a couple times uh, in the last couple weeks doing this. So there are there they are. Not a lot of these uh green ones. Usually they're you know this darker green or a lot of times there's these red ones and these red ones I find are the nicest ones. They tend to hold the most capacity and um, usually there's a lot of good ones. Uh sometimes you open up a battery pack and they're all no good. Um, sometimes you open a battery pack and there's uh, two good ones, four bad ones. Sometimes you open a battery pack and there's um, uh, two bad ones and four good ones. And usually, because they're wired in pairs like this, if this cell was to go, it'll it'll uh, drop the voltage on this one too, and, and to the point that it's useless. You won't be able to you won't be able to bring the voltage back. Now, you can pretty much see what's wrong with this one. And I can guarantee you right now, if we check the voltage in this one, we'll probably show close to zero. So, anyway, so let's let's check the voltage and see what we got. I don't know if you guys can read that, but 3.78. So 3.8 volts is actually considered the best nominal storage voltage for uh, lithium ion cells. Uh, 3.8 is about 50% discharge, maybe a little more. Uh, and this is usually what they recommend if you're going to store the batteries, this is the voltage to store it at. So wh whoever let this little battery cell die or whatever happened managed to leave this cell at a perfect storage voltage. So let's check the next one. 1.13 so most likely I wouldn't have a chance using this one there's a very good chance you'll be able to bring this back 
Um, it'll never have the full capacity again once it's been discharged to this point. Um, in a pinch, if I didn't have a lot of cells, I'd probably try and use this one, and it probably can go up to voltage and it'd be fine. But uh, right now, I don't. I don't think so. I'm gonna put this off to the side. Check the last one. Tab off. Another 3.8 volt. So again, this one's perfectly fine. So as you can see in a battery pack of of uh, six cells, uh, four are good, four are perfectly usable, perfectly fine. You can use them in whatever you want, and um, and especially if you're going to use them for what I use them, which is flashlight batteries. Uh, the discharge rate is not high enough to really put them under stress, uh, especially if you parallel them into many many packs, and you you uh, parallel up and you divide the load, and they're really happy batteries. So. That's four. Okay. Let's see what these red ones are. Three point seven two. So that's a good one too. Okay. Zero point eight. 0 0.08 volts, so this one's basically dead. So that one's not good. So last one. 3.738. So again, that 66% battery, good battery capacity between the two battery packs. So right now, the two battery packs, which you can probably uh, you can buy these online, you can buy them on eBay, uh, you can do what I did is I went to a recycling depot and I said that I'd like to reuse these battery cells and they basically sold them to me uh, what they pay for them, which is I think two bucks a pound, something like that. I, I remember getting uh, a milk crate full of battery packs for approximately $80 Canadian. So out of those, I probably got about 400 cells, and out of those 400 cells, I'm going to say anywhere between 250 and 300 cells were in, in perfect prima condition. And um, originally, I, I recycled these battery cells for uh, an electric bike. And it worked fine. I just, they tended to drop a lot of voltage when being run hard. These cells are not really designed to pull out a lot of um, capacity quickly um, their their internal resistance is much higher these are not like uh, radio control lipo batteries which can give you 20 30 C's uh, discharge rate uh, C is 20 30 C's would be if this is a one amp hour battery pack uh, 20 30 C's would be 20 to 30 amps this thing will be discharged which is what RC batteries can give you without any problems these ones are more closely to half a C to one C is where they're the happiest and um, so they weren't very good for that application but like I said I reused them for everything else my um, my little uh, bush trimmer I powered by these my um, all my flashlights are powered by these um, I have an emergency battery starter that I made out of 40 cells um, 4S and I charge it and it, it fires up my Civic and my, uh, my fiance's RSX without any problems so I keep one of those in the car. Anyways, yeah. I also wanted to talk real quickly about um, why is it that they do this. You can see somebody, uh, this, these probably came from a large company that uh, went through all their laptop, their, their IT department probably went through the battery department. And you can see that they put um, how long they last. You can see they all both only lasted three minutes. So why is it that this battery pack only lasted three minutes and yet 66% of the batteries inside the fire. So as you, you can remember before, when we talked about it, uh, the, there's six cells, two are in parallel, which means that they go positive to positive, negative to negative. So they're basically sharing the, the, the load. And then um, two of these are connected in series, which means positive to negative, and that raises the voltage. Uh, paralleling raises the capacity, 
uh, which means how long they can last, and uh, running them in series raises the voltage. So what happens is if you have you have these things like this. So this is a, this is what a series basically does. If you did this uh, physically like this, right now technically if they're all at four volts. This should this would be a, a twelve volt battery. So what happens is if you could, if you remembered uh, this was a three point eight volt. This was a three point eight volt, and this one was a one point three volt. Uh, so this is no good. So if you were to measure the voltage on this, and in fact that's what that's what this little puppy does is is it measures and voltage you can see the different wires it actually measures the voltage of each individual cell not just the whole thing so probably one of these lost capacity and then from being discharged and run harder it just kept losing its capacity uh, faster and faster and faster to the point that you can recharge all these batteries but this one pair will drop the voltage too quickly and even though these ones will be absolutely fine because this was dropping the voltage so quickly the BMS shuts out the battery the, uh, the battery monitoring or the battery management system as these are called they do not allow an individual cell to drop below a certain point or if it does it will show it to the computer to the actual CPU that this cell is no good so this is the reason we can do what we can do is because usually one battery fails and most likely it was just one of these that destroyed both of them because they're in parallel if this voltage drops it will suck the voltage out of this one and they, they will consider it's like two glasses of water that are equalizing their own uh, water level uh, the same way there's a there's, there's I don't know how to describe it better than that but uh, they basically share the load and if one goes and they're prior like this the other one will go with it doesn't matter how many they are, you can put 50 of them in parallel. If one cell is bad, it will start to discharge all 50 of them. Obviously, 50 cells to be discharged versus one will take a lot longer, but it will do it the same way. Um, that's why one fails, both go, and because they're wired in series, BMS will not let uh, this, this battery pack be charged properly, and this is the reason that happens. So, that was just a little add-on to the other video I made. Um